Hey guys, I just wanted to make a, hopefully a fast video, we'll see, basically about the gospel in a nutshell. Um, some of you may know, and most of you I don't know, about how God created the heaven and the earth. A lot of you don't believe, or, or there may be some of you who don't believe, I shouldn't say a lot, it's actually a small percentage of the world that are atheists, which is a faith, by the way, you have to believe that there is no God, because there is no proof that there is no God. So if you believe that there is no God, that's your own choice. But if you could tell me of any painting that doesn't have a painter or any builder or any building that doesn't have a builder, any house that doesn't have a builder, any computer that doesn't have a designer, maybe I might start to think your way, but that doesn't change all my answered prayers and, and the experience of, of what I felt and saw through Christ. But again, it's your own choice to believe in that faith. If you want to believe that there is no God, all the power to you. I just, I, I hope that this might be a seed to, to plant, to make you think. But as I mentioned, the, the Bible, very first verse says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And uh, as some of you may know, Adam and Eve came right after. And uh, they only had one rule, not to eat of the true, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And unfortunately they did, they sinned, they screwed up, just like I do all the time, just like you do, we've all screwed up, we've all sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Um, <clears throat> and God is a just judge. He is a just God. He, just like any just judge would give me a penalty for breaking the law, if I was to go 100 kilometers over the, the speed limit, a just judge would punish me. If I was to kill, a just judge would punish me. That's what just means. He brings justice. God is the same way. He brings justice. But on the positive note, he's also merciful. So even though God said, if you eat of this tree, if you eat of the fruit of this tree, you will surely die. He's also merciful because after they screwed up, he said, don't worry, I'm going to send someone to save you. And that's all we had to do was believe. There was prophecies of the Messiah all over through the Bible. The Jews still believe that the Messiah is to come. Uh, Christians believe that the Messiah did come. Messiah means anointed one, and in Greek it's Christ. So we believe it was Jesus Christ. A lot of Christians believe that, at, at least. Muslims believe that Jesus did come. Jews believe that Jesus came. But Muslims believe that... Uh, that our scripture got tainted and, and, and it's different. It's not what it should be. Mohammed got it right. And they still believe that Jesus is to come again. So they say, we believe in the same God. We believe in the same Jesus. He's coming again. But we don't believe that he's the son of God. I disagree, as do Christians. But, you know, that's for them. But uh, the Jews, they believe that the Messiah still hasn't come. They believe that, yes, they'll agree that Jesus did come and he was a great prophet, a great teacher, a great rabbi, but he wasn't who he said he was. And the funny thing is, the Bible, the Torah, the Old Testament, which the Jews study, as well as Bible-believing Christians, it prophesied that Jews would not only kill the Messiah, but they wouldn't believe in him. And because of that, God would send the message out to the Gentiles. Gentiles are anyone that isn't a Jew. So if you weren't born and raised Jewish, that means you were a Gentile. And the message got spread to the Gentiles. So that prophecy came true. And again, it got God said he was going to come back for his people, which was the Jews in the end times at the very end. But that's a completely different prophecy. So, <clears throat> so Adam and Eve sinned. They screwed up just like us. And God said, I'm going to send someone to you. Don't worry. And we were to believe in that. Abraham, which was considered the father of the Jews, he was considered a righteous person, not because of what he did, but because he believed God. God said, you will be a father among many nations. And Abraham was already old. His wife couldn't bear children. She was uh, infertile. So, but Abraham said, hey, God's telling me this. I believe him. And because of that, because he trusted God, because he believed in him, because he had faith in him, God considered him righteous. He even called him his friend, which I think was pretty cool. But um, that's what God called us to do, was to have faith, 
to believe. A lot of people believe and were born and raised to believe, including myself, that if you follow the Ten Commandments, you get to go to heaven. But that wasn't the point of the Ten Commandments. The point of the Ten Commandments were to show us that we've sinned. The Ten Commandments were to show us that we're guilty, that we need God. Just like when you have little kids, little babies, you want them to need you. I love it when my little nieces come to me. Uh, my youngest niece, she refuses to come to me, but the other one, the older one, is always, where's my Uncle Adam? Where's my Uncle Adam? I love that. I love that feeling that she wants me. I love that feeling that she wants to have me around. It's an awesome feeling. God is the same way. God doesn't view us as a 27-year-old man, or if you're watching, whether you're 50 or 60 or 10 or whatever. He sees us all as little babies because that's all we are to him. If he spoke the world into existence, he could do anything. So we're useless. We're ants. We're nothing. But yet he still loves us. And he wants us to acknowledge the fact that we're nothing without him and we need him. The Ten Commandments were to show, listen, these are sins. I don't want you to do them. You are not to do them. But if you do, you will die. Just the same with the tree. And yet we're all looking at it. We're like, shoot. I screwed up all of them. If you don't think that you've sinned, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible ends up saying a few chapters after, this is all from the book of Romans, if you want to read. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you believe in the one that Jesus, in the one that God sent, you're saved. You just got to call on him. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, For whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's all we have to do is, is call on his name. He will take care of the rest. He changes you. He changes your heart. I've changed. I'm not the same person I was again. That's why they, they call it being born again or born anew or born from above, born from the spirit. Jesus said, For God is a spirit. And they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus says you must be born again in order to see the, end, the kingdom of heaven. That's John 3, 3. If we want to see God, we have to be born of the spirit. The spirit has to come to life. And that's what happens when you confess your sins to God. You apologize and you ask him, give me life. Come into my life. Come into my heart and change me. So the ten, I am babbling, I apologize, as I usually do. The Ten Commandments were to show our guilt. If you don't feel guilty, I challenge you to read those Ten Commandments and tell me if you haven't sinned. And then read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, which is called the Sermon on the Mount. <coughs> it was uh, one of the best sermons ever, or if not the best sermon from Jesus. And read that and tell me if you haven't sinned. The, the Bible also says, if you know that something is right. If you feel in your heart that you should do something because you know it's right and you don't do it, you've sinned. So we've all sinned. We've all screwed up. And as I mentioned before, the Bible says, for all, for the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die for our sins. We screwed up. We didn't reach God's standards. But God knew that would happen. God is a just judge. He will condemn the world for what we've done wrong. But he gave us a loophole because he's merciful. He says, listen, I sent my son to die on the cross to pay the price for your sins, to pay the price for Adam, the bald, weird, dumb, dumb guy, to pay for his sins, for all the world's sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God did that for us. That's John 3.16, by the way. I used to think it meant Stone Cold Steve Austin. I never knew what it meant until I started reading the Bible. But uh, God paid that price. It's as if I was to go down the road, like I, I, um, and you're speeding. You get caught by the police. You have to face the judge because you're trying to fight. You, know, you don't want to pay your full uh, ticket. And then the judge doesn't care because he's just. He's like, listen, man, you broke the law. You're paying the full bill. There you go. And then you got a guy right beside you saying, hey, here's the money. I'll pay your debt. I'll do it for you. And I want absolutely nothing in return. All you have to do is accept the money. But if you're going to be proud and back off and say, listen, I don't need your money. I don't need your help, which is what the average person does when it comes to the gospel. I don't need God. I'm happy where I am. Or 
yeah, I've sinned. Yeah, I screwed up. But God's merciful. God's loving. He'll forgive me. Yes, God is merciful. Yes, God is loving. But there had to be a price. And until you acknowledge what he did, until you believe what he did, only then do you, will you become born again, will you become saved, which is what the Bible talks about all over. I know a lot, I've been born and raised to believe any church that isn't Catholic is considered a cult. Any person that reads the Bible is cuckoo and they've gone mad and, you know, they've gone crazy. Why does every Bible-believing church say the same thing? Mind you, there'll, there'll be a few differences because there are men, there are women, there, it's run by people where we are different, different, we are screw-ups, we are sinners, we're not perfect. So there are going to be little differences. It's like certain... Jesus healed many, many, many people, but he did it in so many different ways. You know, for someone he touched and he healed. Another person, he spoke and they were healed. So it's like these two people want to start churches and they end up meeting. They're like, oh man, you were healed by Jesus? So was I. How did Jesus... Did, wasn't it awesome when Jesus touched you and you felt his power and it felt so great? Wasn't that the best thing ever? He's like, no, no, no. Jesus doesn't heal from touching. Jesus heals from speaking. Jesus spoke and I, and I could hear his love and his awesomeness and his power through his words and I was healed. I think these two are fighting because they're like, no, man, Jesus heals through touching. No, Jesus heals through speaking. So then the touch guy starts his own church, the touchy-feely good Jesus church, and the guy... Jesus, my sweet speaker, speaky speakerson, starts his own church about speaking and how God speaks healing words. That's why we have different churches. Well, if you go to it, it's very minute. Um, a lot of Baptist churches are very reserved. They're very quiet. They go to church. They're all prim and proper, and it's, it's a little boring, but I, I also love it. I, I've been to many Baptist churches, and I like it. Pentecostals, they're a little crazier, you know, they'll clap and they'll sing and they'll, some will dance, some will jump up and down, just like David did and uh, in the Old Testament. I love the Pentecostal church. I'm, I'm a very reserved person. I go there, I can't jump up and down. I even have trouble clapping, but I like, I wish I could do that. I, but I'm the worst dancer you'll ever see. So I just, I wish I had the cojones to do what they do. But it's very small things like that. Presbyterian churches, they all preach the same thing. Ye must be born again. There has to be a life change. There has to be a transformation that God does. Jesus said, for whoever tries to save their life will lose it. If you try to save your life, you're going to end up perishing. You're going to die. But whoever loses their life for my sake will gain everlasting life. If we give up our old self, if we start to follow after Christ, we gain an eternal life. The Bible talks about our life being a vapor, a mist. It's nothing. It's, what is it, 60, 70, 80 years tops, maybe 100 years if you're very lucky, uh, or if you're able to still move around and have your, your head. I don't know how long I'll live. God willing, I live 60, 70 years old. Who knows? Um, I could die tomorrow. You could die tomorrow. But the point is, it's, it's so quick. You talk to any person in an old folks' home, which I've worked at, um, still kind of do. I just don't take too many shifts anymore. But you talk to any of them, they'll tell you how short life is, how quick it goes by. You talk to any adult in their 50s or their 60s, they're going to tell you the same thing. Life is fast. It goes by quick. Just as the Bible says, it's fast. It's a vapor. It's meant to be training for what's to come. Don't focus on this life. Focus on the life to come. Now, does that mean if you don't focus on this life, you won't have happiness? No. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. If your heart is set on God and you're chasing after God and, you're, and you want more and more of him and you want to love him more and you want to worship him more and you want to do his work, he gives you th like things just... I can't tell you all of the answered prayers that has happened to me. If you, if you want, you can message me and I'll tell you because some of them are pretty personal. But just instant, instant answered prayers. And it's just uh, humbling and amazing that the creator of everything takes time to hear my prayers. So, again, I, I, I kind of fast-tracked everything. I apologize. 
But yeah, Jesus came in the flesh to die for our sins. And all he asks is for us to believe in him, to, to, to repent, to turn from our ways. And it gets hard at times, especially at first. My, my first time, and I explained to a friend not too long ago, it's like walking a puppy for the very first time. I heard this from my Uncle Herm like 10 years ago. I thought it was an awesome analogy. Uh, if you put a leash on a puppy and you walk the puppy for the very first time, they, uh, you know, they're going to pull, they're going to try to go their own way, they're going to be lazy, they're going to sit down and not want to move or want to be carried. It's like that when you first become a born-again Christian. You, you want your old life, you want that old pattern, but yet you have this tugging on your heart, you have the spirit has come to life and it's, and it's twisting and it's turning and it's telling you, no, you're to live this way. So at first it gets hard, but the more and more that you give to God, the more he just absolutely transforms you and you just, you change. You don't want to do those things. You see no pleasure in it anymore. It, you end up hating that type of lifestyle and it, it's not condemning anyone. I'm, I've mentioned it before. If anyone is guilty, it is me. I've told God that I hate him. I told God to leave me alone. I was the biggest blasphemer you could ever meet. There was countless things that I've did wrong and yet God still chose to come into my life. For those of you that don't know, uh, for four years I was anti-God, anti-God, anti-God. I was studying evolution. I was studying Islam. I was studying Judaism. Anything I can get a hold of to prove Christianity wrong. And then when I couldn't, I was just trying to prove God wrong. I didn't want God in my life anymore. And uh, I reached a point where I was like, you know what? I'll start praying again. Uh, th there's something there. So I was just telling God, you know, forgive me for my sins. I, I do believe in Jesus. I always have since I was a baby. And I, I was speaking about Jesus in my prayers. And I just said, Lord, make me a man, but not just a man. Make me a man among men. I was praying that for two weeks. Never told a soul about it. And then one day I feel like the spirits tell me, call your, your one uncle, my uncle Mike. And I, I didn't call my uncle Mike for years before that. Uh, and the only reason why I called him is because my one cousin that I lived with in Montreal wanted to call him and speak to him about and wish him a Merry Christmas. That was the only reason why I talked to him on the phone. I don't, I don't see my, my family too often. So for me to call my uncle is very strange. But I did. I followed what, what I felt was the spirit telling me. And I talked to him for about a half hour. And what does he end up telling me in that message? Adam, you're a man, but not just a man. You are a man among men. What are the odds? The you know it was it was ridiculous for me. It was an absolute answered prayer. God wants to answer your prayers, but before He does that, you have to seek Him out first. You have to want Him first. God wants you to want Him, and if you have trouble, confess it to God. My goodness, I have. I've told Him, Lord, I don't feel like I love you enough. You're not first in my life. There are other concerns that I have. I says, help me, change me. What, 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 what else do I need to do? You know, I, I pray and I read the Bible and, and I go to church and I go to prayer meetings and I study like crazy about the Bible. I says, but there's something missing. There, I'm, I'm holding on to, I'm not completely letting go. Help me. And I'm telling you, it was within a day, people were talking about how I look different. There's something different. Uh, one person said, I just saw you, all these chains come off of you. And I felt it. I felt like I have no worries. I don't care. I don't think about anything because God will provide. I can't deny it anymore. Every prayer I ever pray is, is answered. There's only one prayer so far that hasn't been answered, but instead I get promised. I get told it's coming. It's coming from strangers telling me exactly what I've been getting messages and dreams about. It is coming. It's time. Wait for it. It's happening. And I believe it with all my heart. It's going to happen. God's working on my patience. A lot of us pray, Lord, help me be patient. Well, if you're praying that, watch what you pray for, because God is going to put you in situations that involves patience. He's going to train you. God, help me be more forgiving. He's going to put you in trials and situations that involve you that you need to forgive. So, man, I'm so off track. But <laughs> whatever, I, I, I just, I, I'm, 
if you if you're wondering why do I do this why do I write this stuff on Facebook why do I make these videos it's because I care it's because when you truly absolutely believe with all your heart that this is the that what Jesus said was true that he is the way the truth and the life you want to share it not only was that Jesus command but it's what you want to do it's what you're what I feel called to do. I, I, I want to tell you. It's as if yeah, a bunch of people are walking uh, a path and there's a fork in the road and they're all walking down this one path that leads to a cliff where they're all falling and they're blindfolded so they can't see. And God has blessed me and took off my blindfold for no reason. I don't deserve it. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm just a janitor, uneducated. I, I know nothing other than what I've read in the Bible. So I don't have a blindfold anymore. And I'm telling these people, don't go that way. Go that way where it leads to paradise. You know, there, there's beauty there. There's, there's trees and there's hair for bald people. It's awesome. And, uh, you know, these people are blindfolded. So they tell me, listen, man, you're, you're, you can't see. Uh, we all can't see. We're going down this path because this is the path that, we've been born and raised to go down or this is the path that feels good for the moment but when you believe and, and, you, and you feel and, you, and you've experienced things you don't want those people to go down that path you, you want to tell them listen man there is a God he loves you he wants you Christianity is the only faith that God is seeking man every other faith is man seeking God Christianity is God calling on men if your heart if you hear these words and, and, and it's, it's tugging at your heart and you feel something, the, some people told me when they, they, they get tears in their eyes, listen, that is God tugging on your heart. He wants you in, in your life. He wants you in his life. Sorry. He wants you to pray to him. He wants you to want him. He, just go to him. Confess that you've sinned. Okay, and, and, and apologize and, and start reading your Bible. Don't, if you just keep counting on people to, to lead you and trust you, or if you're going to just follow your gut, you know, it's, it's not. And, and again, the Bible prophesied that people would end up doing that. Listen, read the Bible for yourself. It's not written in code. It's, it's there. It's easy. Start at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Those are great Gospels to read. And if you have trouble understanding it, read it again and read it again. I'm telling you, it starts to make sense. And if you start reading it, you're going to start agreeing with every Bible-believing church because they all read the Bible, they all believe in the Bible, and it all makes sense. But if you're going to just sit there and say, nope, I don't believe in the Bible, and you're not going to read it, but you choose not to believe it because you don't want to admit that we are guilty, we've all screwed up, then you're going to go down the wrong path. And if you say, you know, I pray and I pray and I pray and, and God doesn't hear my prayers. Well, turn things around and, and try things my way. What do you have to lose? If you're, if you're having a tough time in your life, if, if you don't like the way things are going and you want to change, I can guarantee you things will change if you give your life completely over to God. It doesn't cost you a penny. If you go to these Bible-believing churches, you don't have to pay money. Do, do they pass around a basket to, to, you know, put a donation in? Yeah. Do you have to? No. So it's, it doesn't cost you a penny. I'm not, I'm not starting my own church. I'm not a cult leader. I don't have special juice for everybody. I just want to spread the gospel. I don't care what church you go to. Even, I don't care what church, any church out there, as long as you are reading the Bible and you are getting to know God and you're having a personal relationship with him which is what he wants this video is way too long i don't even feel like i got the message out but let's try it out it's up to god i can't touch people's hearts only god can if you have any questions please ask please call uh message me i'm willing to talk at any time i don't care if it's even three in the morning if you're out to debate though i am not looking for it although no one's asked to debate me so that's pretty comforting but I'm not here to prove that I'm right. I don't care whether or not you think I'm right or wrong, stupid or smart. I'm here to tell you what the Bible says. And I'm asking you to read it yourself because you will agree with it. 
All right. Love you guys. Take care.